Whenever Anglican priest Father Rod Bauer has something to say, this is where he heads. What inspired today's sign, Rod? I've been reflecting on what's going on in Parliament in terms of the changes of leadership. It's just um, you know, same old, same old, nothing actually changes. So what do you think? I'm very happy with that. Change leader, change nothing, change systems, change the world. I'm passionate about human rights and so that's what drives me out into the, onto the stage. We know that trickle-down economics is a lie. It just helps the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It creates a wider gap. It marginalises the voiceless. Why I'm outspoken is because uh, I think there are some incredibly important things for us to think about as a people and as a nation. And uh, part of the prophetic role uh, in the church is to get people to think about that and to highlight those issues. The sign which changed everything went up in 2013. Father Rod had been asked to deliver last rites and the dying man's family was reluctant to include his male partner. They were very anxious that I would be judgmental of this man. It really pulled me up that this family could experience marginalisation because of me and because of what I represented. So I came back to the church and I put up that sign, Dear Christian, some people are gay, get over it, love God. And the world went crazy. There was an overwhelming positive response. Uh, and I think when people dress like me say things like that, uh, it, it actually makes people stop and think, wow, hang about, that's not what I thought he would say. Yes, there are people getting on boats uh, coming from other countries. That is a fact. But how we talk about that can either be a truth or a lie. What do you think motivates Rod? His burning passion for justice. He, it burns and inside of him it drives him. Father Rod's wife Kerry is his chief supporter and sounding board. So, you know, it's that drive to push for, you know, a more cohesive, kinder, more compassionate world. As he explains in his new book, Outspoken, being outspoken has also prompted death threats. One not long before I went in the Mardi Gras in, in Sydney, there was a number of, of threats saying, you know, we should take him out, you know, he's an antichrist. I get upset when I talk about it. Um, we said goodbye to each other before. Um, I got on the float. He started to say, if I don't come back, then he just didn't finish it. I thought, well, this is, you know, this is a really important thing. There's, there's, there's actual, not only my life at risk here, but there's a lot of people's lives at risk here um, because LGBTI young people were taking their own lives. Rod said, I can't stop, and, you know, I kind of, when I get it, we can't stop because someone has to challenge this stuff. The plan was to focus on three issues, marriage equality, asylum seekers and climate change. But over the years, he's covered many subjects, including gun control. Morning. Thank you. Morning. Many parishioners have chosen St Mary's because of the signs. I love the signs and I can say I really feel that um, Father Rod represents what I think. People, they say, well, you know, Rod should just keep out of politics. But, you know, what was Jesus Christ if not involved in politics, for goodness sake? Didn't you think by about this time you had a pretty serious problem on your hands with child sexual abuse within your diocese? The Royal Commission into the Institutional Response to Child Sex Abuse uncovered that a number of men you knew well and trusted had done terrible things. That's true. Father Rod's mentor, Father George Parker, was charged with 24 child sex offences against two young boys. There was a moment when I, I, I said to Kerry, I've just got to take this off and I can never wear it. I, can, I can't keep doing this. I can never wear it again. And it took some time to pull myself together and say, hey, this is not about you, this is about, um, this is about the survivors and that's where your focus has to be. George Parker died within weeks of being charged. How do you think the church has handled this now? Because many people believe that the church hasn't done anywhere near enough. It was very clear to us that our absolute commitment needed to be to survivors, no matter what happened, and to pay proper redress. And 
and that has been our commitment as a diocese uh, right from the beginning. Our political system seems to be heading in a concerning direction, uh, a direction that uh, favours the rich, marginalises the poor. Over the past week, the leadership spill has inspired Father Rod Sines and his sermon. Now, our new Prime Minister, remember, I'm not fighting against Peter Dutton. Not, oh, that was a bit of a Freudian slip, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, give it a couple of days. No, uh, I'm not fighting against Scott Morrison. I'm opposing the system. Has the church hierarchy ever questioned you about the signs? The bishop may not always agree with what I say or how I say it, but uh, our current bishop is uh, a man very passionate about human rights, concerned about social justice, and believes strongly that the church has to be at the centre of those conversations. The Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon all whom you love. You'll keep going out there whenever inspiration strikes. Absolutely. Every day, hopefully getting people to think about how we can build a better world.